Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about um, optimizing models in R and especially the danger of over-optimizing models. I think this is the, the most important video I've done up to date. Uh, it's a, an issue that bites everybody. Uh, beginners all the way to advanced modelers and it's also only an introduction to a huge uh, subject. Um, but hopefully we'll, for those who are not aware of this we'll kind of um, point at some of the causes, potential causes, to over, -optimi to over optimizing your model. Um, I'm going to use, uh, I just loaded this from the help file, I'm going to use the XGBoost model. This is uh, an interesting model because uh, uh, recently on Kaggle, on Kaggle competitions, it's done very well. Uh, some top people who've placed in top positions have been using it. And it's, uh, you can parallelize it, so if you have, you know, a number of cores, uh, it works very fast. Uh, it's a gradient boosted tree, so uh, a very, very, you know, very accurate model. And it's efficient, fast, and more importantly for our needs, it has a lot of tunable features, a lot of parameters that we can tweak uh, in order to, you know, to get to squeeze more, uh, uh, more juice out of our model, so to speak. Um, and let's take a step back and, and, and so we understand, so we're all on the same page of what optimizing a model means. Uh, I would even take it a, a few steps back and say optimizing a question. Um, when you approach, when you approach a, a, a modeling task, you can think about, uh, you know, uh, what kind of data you're going to collect. And if you're, if you're not getting the results you're looking for, you could look for different data, different variables, more or less variables, more or less observations, you know, to tweak your bias, to tweak your, your variance. Those are all forms of optimizing um, a model, right? And then, uh, more concretely, you can, you know, select the, the right model for the type of data you're, 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 you're you know, you're looking uh, to understand. So, you know, it could be a classification model, a regression model. Then you could have an ensemble of models, groups of models, which, you know, I made a video on that for those who are interested in that subject. Um, and then all these models have uh, tuning parameters. Some will take iteration, some will take alpha, lambda, some, you know, uh, number of trees, etc. So all these, all this is actually overwhelming the amount of things you can tweak in order to get a, a, a higher prediction rate. Um, but I'm only going to focus today on the XGBoost model. It's a fantastic model. And um, we're going to look at uh, just two parameters. The, um, here, let me just load it up first. So if you don't have it installed, you'll 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 need to install it, and we're going to look at two um, uh, just there are many parameters you can tweak. But we're going to look at the maximum depth of the tree and the maximum number of iterations we're going to allow the model to take. Um, I'm going to start loading a few things here. Let's see your libraries here. Uh, the caret will need to create dummy variables. Uh, I have a video on that too for those who, who are not familiar with that. R curl to to download the data set, a metrics to calculate the errors and actually boost is the model we're going to use. But in a nutshell, optimizing is all about trying to get the highest accuracy rate out of your, you know, out of the data you have on hand. Unfortunately, the data you have on hand may or may not be exactly what you're going to have in the future. And so take an example, if you're going to, if you have a data set uh, uh, of, uh, the, you know, sales numbers on, on suntan lotion, sales of suntan lotion during, during winter months, and uh, you know that model, you, as 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 much as you train it, is probably not going to do really well uh, during summer months because there's a seasonality effect, uh, and it's not. It, you, you can't you know you can't train you can't predict very well what what you don't understand. And um, you know sales of suntan lotion will be completely different during the summer uh, versus the winter. So that's just a, a, a seasonality effect. So. Uh, the idea is that we can, ne you know, there's no, there's no secret trick to, to, to understand the future. But what we can do is we can, by, by using cross-validation intelligently, we can maximize the, 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 the depth of learning, uh, all the while minimizing the, the depth of over-optimization. And that's what, that's what I'm shooting for today in this video. So, I'm going to load the data set. I won't say too much about it because it's really not that. Uh, uh, pertinent. Um, it's uh, from the UCI machine learning repository. They have a lot of good stuff up there. This is one using census data to predict um, the the income 
of uh, adults, whether they're over or under $50,000 a year. And it's going to use things such as age, uh, education, you know, occupation, marital status, etc. So our, our um, outcome is going to be uh, uh, a, um, uh, a one if it's over 50k and a zero if it's under 50k and that's what we're going to try to predict as well we're then going to we're, we're going to take all this data we're going to uh, binarize it meaning that we're going to uh, make everything remove all factors remove all characters and make them all into uh, uh, numbers so it's actually going to go up and I have to step it in the code all this code will be on github so you know don't bother copying it from here just get it uh, from github the link will be in the descriptions of the video. And I put two ways of getting this video. If this one doesn't work, if the get URL doesn't work, just try the read CSV by passing it the HTTPS um, uh, URL. Uh, one, some work on Windows, some work on, on Mac. It's hit and miss. So here we have it. Let's see what we have here. There we go. We got 32,000 observations and this is binarized, so uh, you know, dumbified. So you now you have every single option is actually laid out as a column. So you know, marital status, education, etc., with income being our outcome. Okay. Um, I'm going to set the, uh, the outcome name. I like to generalize it, so we're not stuck. So we did the same code will work will will work very well on on other data sets, and base, and I like to have a list of predictors. Everything excluding the the income now this is what we're going to do so you saw earlier that we have about 32,000 uh, observations we're going to simulate this as a real uh, a real world scenario we're only going to take the first 10 percent of our data that's it and that's going to be what we're going to be training and testing on uh, uh, at first so uh, I am taking you know point one uh, basically 10% of the rows from our, uh, our data set. I'm going to take half of that and assign it to our training data set and half of the, that, so the first five will be training, the second 5% will be a testing data set, okay? Very simple so far. The other 90% we're going to keep them, pretend that we don't know it yet, and that's what we're going to do as a real-world production testing. So the 90% we don't know what it is, we're going to store that and forget about it. All we have now is a 5% is a training set and uh, testing set. So if, if you're curious to see what it, what's the size, so 1,600 uh, rows uh, for the training set and the same thing for the testing, for the test set. Okay. So we're going to do a simple cross-validation, very crude. And this is it, okay. So we're going to uh, run um, our training data set through the XGBoost model. And we're only going to tweak two parameters, like I said earlier, the, the the number of iterations and the depth of trees. That's it. So this is going to basically going to do a combination of 1 through 10 for the depth and 1 through 20 for the rounds, for the, um, the iterations. And we're going to go through the combination of all of these. And we're going to keep track of the error. So it'll, it'll train this on the training data set, then it'll predict it on a testing data set. And it's always going to keep track of the smallest error possible. And when it finds a new smallest error, it's going to uh, pull out the, the depth and the rounds. This basically means that we found the ideal settings for the XGBoost model for our 5%, um, uh, for our 10% of data, right? Training and testing. Okay, I'm going to run this. And there it goes. So whenever it prints something, it's actually finding a smaller error. That means our model is getting better and better. And it's going to churn through every combination. And the error is slowly getting smaller and smaller. So our model is getting more and more accurate. And you can probably see where I'm leading with this. Basically, it's getting more accurate. Uh, our training data is getting more accurate uh, on our testing data. So it's perfectly optimized for this 5% training and this 5% testing, right? Uh, it, does it reflect the real world? Oh, we'll see in a few. So um, it's still doing something right now. It's probably going through the, the other, you know, it's got to go all the way to 10. And there we find it. So 4, a 19, and an error rate of, of uh, uh, 0.315 is our ideal setting for what we have. So I'm actually going to 
copy this offline just so we have it. Okay. Now we're going to cross validate this same data but in a slightly different way. What's called this is called repeated cross validation. So we're going to basically divide our data set, our, our 10 percent that we allocated for um, uh, that we basically currently know into 30 portions and we're going to uh, loop through these these 30 portions and assign uh, 1 30th of our data as testing and the rest will be training and we're going to keep going until everything has had a chance to be a testing portion of the data so in, in essence we are uh, uh, we are getting 30 uh, different data sets uh, of, of a pair of training and testing. And we're still going to go through one, 1 through 10 of depth and 1 through 20 of the round. So we're still going to tune the XGBoost model, but except every time it tries a new tuning, it's going to then do the repeated cross-validation 30 times, basically going through every portion of uh, our data. Uh, and we're gonna, and, and this is a way. This repeated cross validation is gonna allow us to get a lot more learning out of our data, and hopefully less over optimization. And this reminds me, before I forget, that there is a great uh, um, uh, tuning uh, model called uh, uh, leave one out cross validation. This is, it's, it's, it basically it does the same thing as we're doing here, except instead of taking a thirtieth of your data, it's actually taking one single observation is gonna be test. Everything else is gonna be train. Then, after this, it's going to take the next row, make it test, and everything else train. Next row, and so on and so forth. So it's training on all your data minus one row, and it keeps doing this until it has gone through every single row. Now, this is, in theory, this is a fantastic approach, because you're really uh, uh, going to train on as much as you can while still having some kind of form of validation of how your model did. And the, the, the mean error that comes out of this is going to be very accurate. Uh, for what we have, a lot more accurate than doing, you know, the, the, the typical 50-50 split or 60-40 or split. Uh, the problem is this is very slow. This 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 leave one out is is on normal de normal normal normally sized data sets going to take forever. So this you can see it's very fast just because a lot of it has to do with the XG boost model that's extremely fast, and we're still going to get a good understanding of our data, right? Okay, so we're going to run. Uh, we're going to cross-validate 30 times, each time using a different section as a testing set, and we're still going to run the depth and the rounds for each one. And here we go. So it's going to be a little slower. There it goes. It actually runs a lot faster um, when I don't have the video running. The, the, the screen recording is making this go very slow, so I'm actually going to pause it uh, and, and, and turn it back on when we're done. That said, uh, XGBoost does take a lot of memory, so um, uh, keep an eye on your, you know, uh, on your memory and make sure you have enough for what you're doing. And if you don't, then you, know, you may have to do a larger cross-validation uh, size or less loops or something. You, know, you, have, to, you have to play. This, this is on a, um, a MacBook with uh, 8, megs of RAM, 8 gigs of RAM. Sorry. So, uh, a normal size machine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put on pause, and I'll be right back. Okay, the number came back. Um, the ideal settings 418 and uh, 0.319. So it's very close to what we had originally, right? I'll pull that up again so we just so we can all be on the same page. We got a. 419 and an error of 0.315. So this is going to be a more accurate error reflection, right? Because it's testing against everything. It's using more training data than our original model did, and it's being uh, it was tested on every um, on the entire 10%, not just on 5%. So one way of seeing if this makes any difference is to reset our um, our training set back to our original uh, back to our original 10% remember um, instead of the 16 we're using the 3200 rows um, that's a training portion and now we're going and we're going to set 
the testing portion to be everything else. So 29,000 uh, rows instead of 3,000, right? And we're going to see how both of our tuned models performed. So 3.15 error rate, and this was supposed to be 4 and 18, right? So we're just going to 418. And there, a slightly smaller error rate. So it's not a huge difference, but it just shows to you that um, tuning, uh, if you're trying to, to tune, uh, if you're trying to get sell settings, the ideal settings through cross validation, then you just don't want to just split it in two or even in three, you know, do 60, 20, 20, 60 for training. 20 for testing, 20 for validation. Why not do it on everything? For example, we decided to do a, th uh, a 30th chunk, our entire set, that entire 10% with a 30th of, of, the, um, uh, of the data and uh, of that data, and then uh, subsequently make a new 1 30th of the data, the testing, and everything else training. Next 30th, everything else training. So it's a way of, of maximizing your your data that you have on hand, and avoiding to over optimize because you're you're basically training it on a much larger data set and testing it on a lot more too, which will give you a better a higher optimization. That's why when you look at these error rates, um, this gave us a higher error rate. That means it didn't perform as well as our individual model did, and that that makes total sense. Okay, so keep in mind that um, two more things I'd like to share before I end this video. Um, XGBoost has some built-in cross-validation features, so a lot of this stuff you wouldn't have to do it manually. And so does Carrot have great um, uh, cross-validation that are generalized to a lot of models, to over, I think, almost 170 models are supported through Carrot. So you probably wouldn't want to do these things manually, but I think it helps to understand it, uh, what's going on exactly. And something you could try is instead of cross-validating, if you have the, the, the computing horsepower, why just do it? Why do your cross validation out of thirty portion, out of a thirtieth of your data? Do it out of a hundredth, you know. Chunk it up even smaller. Get closer and closer to that. Leave one out where it just does one row. Uh, that just becomes very slow, but uh, you will start getting a better picture. The ultimate picture, basically, is to leave one out, right, of what you you currently hold. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.